He's TechCrunch are reporting that Apple is loading up on generative AI resources with plans to invest $1 billion annually going forward. Keith Kirkpatrick is with us, Research Director at Futurum Group, to talk all about this. Um, your thoughts on what we're hearing so far? Thanks, Nicole, for having me. Um, yeah, it's actually really interesting because if you've looked at the news over the last 8 to 12 months, You've heard a lot of names talking about generative AI. Everyone from Microsoft to Google, Salesforce, Adobe, the list goes on and on. What haven't you heard or who haven't you heard from? It's Apple. So it's really interesting that now they've actually said, okay, we're going to be committing this level of, of capital to generative AI, which really is essentially what I would say is, is you know, sort of a catch up move more than anything else. They have not done or not made any announcements in terms of, you know, rolling out that technology either into their devices or operating systems. So uh, I think it's it's high time that they that they do something. So does billion dollars sound like enough? I mean, if you're uh, playing catch up, not really, but it's a start. I think if you look at, I mean, you know, we actually put together forecasts on investment into AI and. You know, if you look at what we're forecasting, I think, you know, by 2027, we're looking at, oh, 6.9 billion into AI software alone, a generative AI software alone. And we're talking just about things like text generation, summarization analysis. So it's really not that much when you consider, you know, how much uh, the market is going to continue to grow. Uh, but it, again, it's a good start for the company. Uh, they just have to really focus in on the things that matter, and that is going to be how are they going to actually deploy uh, this generative AI technology? Is it going to be on device? Is it going to be in the operating system? Is it going to be embedded? Um, and, and then, of course, the, I think the bigger question is how do they deal with the question of data privacy and security? How are these models being trained? Those are the things that are really going to matter, particularly to consumers who don't have a whole lot of trust in generative AI right now. Mm -hmm. I want to expand and talk more about AI, but of course we do have some Apple headlines today. Um, of course, it's been down for seven consecutive days. There are also the um, supplier Foxconn under investigation by Chinese tax and land regulators. And, you know, the question is, is it set up for earnings properly? Um, Bank of America, for example, expects those results come mostly in line. Any thoughts on any of these headlines when it comes to Apple? Well, you know, all of those, you know, factors could, could come into play in terms of how, uh, you know, how it impacts their their price moving forward. I think it's um, they're in a tough spot. I think it's uh, it is certainly not the best economic environment right now. And you know, unless they're able to, you know, to demonstrably show improvements in terms of shipments, it, it might negatively impact uh, their value moving forward. I mean, what did you think about you, when you use the phrase trust is key? Um, tell me a little bit about this. This is we just finished talking talking about at least one cybersecurity breach um, this week. Yeah, well, trust. There's really a couple of elements to trust. Uh, the first is trusting that the organization and that being Apple, you know, is, you know, asking for consent if it is using any customer or consumer data to train their AI models. Um, you know, it is one of those things where uh, people give away so much information just by virtue of them using a product. They want to make sure that their information, if it's being used, that they have actually gotten consent from Apple to use that. The, the second thing, of course, is uh, looking at can these AI models be trusted? Uh, you know, when we're talking about things like recommendations, uh, you know, for watching movies, let's say, that's a little less important than when it comes down to using uh, the data for more important things like providing, um, let's say you're using your, um, uh, using AI to work on, um, you know, a, a presentation in a, in a, you know, presentation application. You want to make sure that, you know, these models, if they're providing suggestions based on data that the model has been trained correctly. Um, so it, it really does come down to making sure that, they have demonstrated that they're being responsible in terms of the data that they're collecting and that the data that they're using to train their model. And of course, to make sure that 
and this goes more to the cybersecurity angle, making sure that they are protecting any data that they have in the event of a cyber breach. Because as you know, yeah. these things, you know, are uh, crop up every week. And you showed us uh, in, in the chart you sent me uh, about revenue in the world markets from 2022 to 2027 and how much really is getting allocated to something like this. In the meantime, um, you have the different, the battles, right? You have open AI and chat GPT and Google has barred um, Adobe and Amazon and Salesforce. Each one has its own. Um, what can we take away from what Apple has done this far, thus far, um, as you know, it has Ajax, right? And what else are you looking for? Well, it you know, it, it's likely they're going to roll this uh, technology into some sort of uh, an application that helps speed up coding, you know, to help developing apps a little bit more quickly. Uh, sort of like what uh, I think Microsoft was doing with uh, GitHub. Uh, the other thing you might be able to start seeing is it. AI being incorporated into things like its music offerings to provide more targeted recommendations. Uh, all of those things are kind of on the table. Nothing has really been decided yet. Uh, but I think the, the key really is going to be, uh, you know, them standing up something fairly quickly because they are kind of behind in the marketplace. Uh, you know, look at Microsoft right now. If you log on to Windows right now, you have a little co-pilot icon down in the left-hand corner where it will help you compose, uh, you know, content. It will, you know, all of these little tools that people are starting to get familiar with, taking a, basically taking that GPT functionality that, you know, early in the year, if you wanted to try or and mess around with GPT, you went to uh, OpenAI site where you went to Google Bard and you typed something in, in the prompt and you got some sort of result back, which is nice. It was novel to see, whoa, you know, this would go out and provide an answer using natural language, but really it was more for novelty. What a lot of these companies are doing and what Apple needs to do is incorporate this functionality in a way where the results that you get are grounded in some sort of uh, truth or a source of truth, which it could be, you know, a body of knowledge, which has been vetted. It could be uh, within the parameters of an application in terms of, let's say, I want to use uh, chat GPT to better uh, operate within a, or, or get help within uh, an application. All of the responses will come from within that one body of knowledge that is trusted. And as, as we look forward, and I know you're doing a lot of research when it comes to technology, when it comes to AI, and um, there's a few things that we're getting teased about. Tim Cook, for example, keeps teasing the Vision Pro VR headset. Um, is that coming? You have, you have Elon Musk teasing full self-driving. Do you think that's in the AI realm? I mean, what do you think about these two companies and anything else that might surprise us? Sure, I, all of that is coming. The question is, is it coming uh, tomorrow? Is it coming next week? Is it coming years from now? I think uh, we're still still in very, very early days in terms of the technology because it's one thing to demonstrate the technology in a very closed environment um, where you have no sort of uh, outside, uh, you know, you know, outside stimuli that could really impact that. I think what it really what we're really going to look forward to is when they're actually able to deploy it safely and reliably. So, for example, looking at self-driving cars where, you know, it can deal with with basically there's edge cases where you have a, you know, a vehicle that's driving down the road and then something, you know, interacts with it and it has to make a choice between, let's say, you know, a, a collision with a baby carriage versus a person on a motorcycle. There's those types of very, very, you know, individual experiences that we as humans, you know, have a wealth of experience in terms of dealing with that we really just need to wait and see how are the models going to handle those uh, ultimately moral questions as opposed to just, you know, looking at it from a strictly mathematical perspective. Yeah. All right, uh, Keith, thank you so much. Keith Kirkpatrick, Futurum Group. Thank you.